time for Marvel Unmasked, your place for everything Marvel Comics. Welcome to episode 3, guys. I can't believe we've even made it this far. Now remember, this is designed for YouTube, and we're going to be showing and referencing a couple of visual elements. But we do have an audio version, and it's posted over on Libsyn and Spotify now. So if you're one of those people over there, welcome to the podcast, and maybe consider joining us over on YouTube. So this is the spot we reserve for our sponsors, but we don't have any because we do this for fun. So instead, I just want to ask everybody to listen, share, and leave a comment. It's huge, it helps me out a lot, and it's the only way I can make this grow. Also, get in on the contest. If you watch our videos, you know we're giving away a copy of Secret Wars this month. It's only a soft cover, sorry, but it's one of the best comics ever. All you have to do is leave a comment, be subscribed, and hit like. Well, before we dive in, it has been a tumultuous week for the people over at Marvel. There have been some ups, there have been some downs, and there have been some rumors that have been smashed. We'll take our time a little bit to dig in here because I think this episode might be a little longer. So let's just dig into our Disney Plus news. News this week from Disney Plus is that there is some imminent casting on the way for both the Moon Knight series and the Miss Marvel series, and that would be the title characters for both. Now, we've been given zero indication on who Marvel has chosen to play these big heroes, but I do suspect in traditional Marvel manner, they'll probably catch us off guard. Both shows' release schedules are pressing forward on a little bit of an accelerated pace, so I am really curious on when we'll get this news, and I do suspect it'll be within the next couple of days. Now, for Moon Knight this week, we did get a report from MCU Cosmic about when the production was going to kick off and they're claiming it'll start in August. So what does this mean to us? Well, it does mean we very well may see the show as early as 2021. This, given quite a bit of the bad news this week, seems like one of the few positive high points that we needed to hit. I can't wait for the show. We also got a little Falcon and the Winter Soldier news, and it wasn't good. The production for the Falcon and the Winter Soldier has been delayed. Now, this isn't some sort of production or cast issue. It's because of earthquakes. That's right, the guys down in Puerto Rico are dealing with earthquakes. And this has put production on a temporary hold. Now, if you didn't know, two earthquakes, a 6.4 and a 5.7, have recently hit Puerto Rico, and they've done a lot of damage. Marvel reportedly doesn't plan to film in Puerto Rico at a later date, and now is basically seeking an alternate location to finish filming. It is completely unclear right now whether this will actually impact the release schedule of the show, but I'm pretty sure it won't. We'll have to wait and see. Feige is pretty funny. When you listen to him in interviews and he talks about release dates, he seems very firm on hitting them whenever possible. The third big Disney Plus story this week is that it was originally reported by Murphy's Multiverse that the Hawkeye series had been canceled indefinitely. Now this got fans pretty riled up, but Disney rather quickly turned around with a response and they have vehemently denied that this is going on. I suspect there's little truth in the middle though. We know Jeremy Renner had a little bit of drama with his family problems here recently and it made the news and it was not pretty. Disney hates bad press and I really do suspect that they put a little bit of delay on this because of that. The other part of it is Katherine Langford's availability. To get the actors and actresses you want, you have to work around their schedule, and she has a pretty busy schedule. So we'll have to wait and see what's going on with her, but I do suspect they'll work this all out very soon. Young Avengers is likely to be a big part of Marvel's plan for the future, and they need the new Hawkeye replacement, and they need that to go off seamlessly for it to work. So I don't think this series is going anywhere. I actually think it's just delayed. I also don't think Disney wants any more James Gunn style egg on their face by overreacting to a situation that they don't have all the facts for, make a decision, and then have to roll it back a little later on. In no way, shape, or form was Alan Horn probably happy about what happened with James Gunn or having to roll that decision back, so I'm sure they don't want to do it again. Now, one of the things for Marvel Studios that appears to be going right on schedule right now is production of The Eternals. And we are getting a lot of set pictures. Most of these pictures are from just Jared, so we're not going to steal their photos. We'll run a couple of their Twitter posts in the background here for you to watch, but I'd recommend you go over and check all the pictures out on their site. What we did get this week was a good bit of Kit Harrington and Gemma Jan spotted in some of their civilian clothes. I did find Kit Harrington's jacket a little interesting considering the classic comic costume. We got some more pictures of some people flying and some other sort of incidental from production. But overall, this looks like it's a standard Marvel movie going along at the standard Marvel pace without any unstandard Marvel issues. We did, at the very last minute of recording this podcast, get an actual plot summary for Marvel's The Eternals in the form of a press release. Let's check it out. Marvel Studios' The Eternals features an exciting new team of superheroes in the Marvel Cinematic Universe, ancient aliens who have been living on Earth in secret for thousands of years. Following the events of Avengers Endgame, an unexpected tragedy forces them out of the shadows to reunite against mankind's most ancient enemy, the Deviants. Sounds pretty cool to me. I can't wait. It sounds like they're sticking with some of the classic Kirby storylines involving the Eternals and the Deviants, which makes me pretty happy. There's so much material there, you don't kind of want to jump forward and miss a lot of the good stuff. So, it's nice to finally have an official plot summary for the movie. I am really curious on when we're going to get a teaser trailer for this movie. I suspect it won't be too long, and is likely to hit us before production is complete. 
Although we talked about how important Black Widow is in setting up Phase 4, I suspect this is actually the linchpin movie for Marvel. Although everything in Phase 4 might not be Eternals related, this may very well kick off several threads and storylines that will come together in the important crossover events that we know will close out probably Phase 6. Given the classic Eternals costumes we've seen for all of the Eternal characters, I am really curious on what Kit Harrington's Black Knight is going to end up looking like. They've given no indication if they're going to use the classic costume or the more modern costume, where he incidentally wears a leather jacket and a blue shirt, like in some of these pictures, and welds a weapon that looks very much like a lightsaber. Seeing that Disney owns both Marvel and Star Wars, this would be a great way to avoid lawsuits, huh? The Eternals is set to release on November the 6th, so I imagine we'll be getting a trailer probably right around the time Black Widow was released. One of the other what I would consider minor stories from Marvel this week has to do with Robert Downey Jr. Now, if you've been following RDJ, you know he's promoting his new movie, Dr. Doolittle. Or just Doolittle. And he was inevitably asked about his possible return to the MCU as Iron Man following his death in Avengers Endgame. His response, well, was interesting, and he said, and I quote, yeah, anything could happen. Then he went on to say, as far as I'm concerned, I've hung up my guns and I'm good to let it go. I also think Marvel is on this journey now where they're trying a bunch of other stuff. I'm excited to see how it all goes. It's hard to project, but we have a lot of stuff we want to do. So I took this basically to mean, not likely, but he's open to it. On a personal note, I have to wonder, this new movie is coming out and he may have seen it already and might not be terribly happy with the outcome. His star power is really driven by that Iron Man character, so unless he continues that, he may want to drift back into playing Tony Stark just to keep that status alive. There's no doubt he's a great actor, and we're not debating that here at all, but there's a little bit of leveraging gamesmanship that goes with a career, and I think RDJ might actually be playing that. We'll have to wait and see, but personally, I think we'll see him again as Iron Man in the not-so-distant future. I believe both him and Chris Evans will actually return for a Secret Wars event under the Russo brothers within, say, five years or so. Put it on your calendar, and we'll circle back if that happens. Probably the ugliest news in the last week is Scott Derrickson leaving Doctor Strange in the Multiverse of Madness. For many people, this was unexpected, but if you've been following along, it shouldn't have been at all. Derrickson's had a rather rough couple years since he made this first film, in case people didn't know. His house actually burned down in the California wildfires. And over the last couple weeks, you could see a sense of frustration in his tweets about various issues dealing with Marvel. He clearly was not happy with the rapid pace that this movie was moving on. And he really wants to make a horror movie. Recently, Kevin Feige has even come out and said that there will be scary elements in the Doctor Strange sequel, but it's not so much a horror movie. This is probably where him and Derrickson got on different pages and decided to part ways. Derrickson wants to make a true-to-heart horror film, something really scary. And what Feige is more looking for, based on some of those interviews he did at the New York Film School, an exciting action movie with scary elements in it. And he pointed specifically to movies like Raiders of the Lost Ark, Indiana Jones and the Temple of Doom, and Gremlins. So that gives you a great idea of what he's talking about. The biggest thing I see here is that Marvel really needs to get their stuff together really fast. This movie is set to go in production in about three and a half months. This means really any creative decisions that have already been made are locked and are unlikely to change very much and Marvel just needs to find a director that will follow the vision that's been put down on paper. I'm really curious on who they'll pick, and a lot of people are pointing to horror directors, and I do not suspect that that's what's going to happen. Think what happened with Ant-Man. That's probably your best example of where Feige and crew are going to go with this situation. Like I said, in that recent New York Film Academy Q&A that Kevin Feige did, he made it really clear, when they set a release date, they don't miss it, so I don't suspect this one will be missed. We'll have to wait and see, but... I don't think the movie is in danger yet, but it's definitely a sign of trouble and part of a really rough week for Marvel. There was a bit of a kerfuffle in the past week around the New Mutants. Over the weekend, there was a post over on the D23 website, and the post mentioned the release of the New Mutants trailer and tried to hype it up a little bit, but it was the quote they put in there that got everybody's attention, and they said, a seriously electrifying new addition to the Marvel Cinematic Universe. Now, obviously, nobody was counting on this New Mutants movie being part of the MCU, and this got fans more than a little bit fired up. Disney and Marvel seemed to retract this rather quickly, and the post was taken down. So, it was probably a mistake. Personally, I would be shocked if Kevin Feige used this movie as his basis for introducing mutants into the MCU. Not gonna happen. As far as I can tell, Feige is a guy with a plan, and that is not part of any plan that's in place anywhere. The movie does look pretty good, and the new trailer was more than a little awesome, but I don't think it's going to be part of the MCU. I do, however, think it falls into Marvel's new multiverse framework, and it's not being discarded specifically for that reason. Marvel's going to use that multiverse effect in the future to really drive their franchises and use it to combine various characters in rather unusual and specific circumstances. 
And that actually takes us to the next story, the Morbius trailer. Now in this past week, we got a new Morbius trailer, and I'll give you a few thoughts on it in a second. But the biggest thing about the trailer was the cameo at the end, and Adrian Toomes. Now the trailer itself says a lot about what's going on. We saw a couple days before it came out a leaked picture which featured a alley scene with Morbius and a poster showing Spider-Man. This looks very much like the original Sam Raimi version and it's even been speculated to be a PS4 poster or PS4 version. It's still unclear. However, I do have some interesting thoughts on where this is going. Most people saw Adrian Toomes, think Tom Holland, and think we're headed right to a Sinister Six movie. And we very well may want to do that. Sony has been trying for years to get that kind of project off the ground and into theaters, and this might be their best chance. But I really don't think that poster was there by accident, and I can't imagine a production flub up including the wrong version of Spider-Man and then going all the way to release trailer. Personally, I think this very well may be the introduction of something else. We've heard rumors, and fan speculation mostly, about a potential Into the Spider-Verse live-action movie. For me, it does raise the question of where this Morbius character lives, and this version of Adrian Toomes. Could Sony be setting up a live-action Spider-Verse, and that really was the Tobey Maguire version of Spider-Man in the poster. And in the world that Morbius lives in, and that version of Adrian Toomes, they have a different Spider-Man, Tobey. I.e., a continuation of the Raimi story. Now, this is pretty wild speculation, and it very well may not be true. But I do find it really curious they used that poster. And it is Sony, so I suppose it could have been a mistake, because, you know, those people seem to be run by idiots sometimes. But for them to put the wrong version of Spider-Man on the poster, and then allow that image not only to leak, but be part of the trailer, mm, says a lot, and I don't think it's by accident. As for the trailer, well, it was a bit mm, meh for me. To me, it very much felt like the Venom trailer, like a superhero movie out of the early 2000s or late 1990s, following the formula that they used then, and not really the modern formula we're using now. With all that said, I did see some pretty cool stuff, and obviously it's a teaser trailer, so there's no way to know exactly how good this movie's gonna be. And Jared Leto's no slouch, the guy is a great actor, and I even liked him as the Joker, unlike many people. So I'm going to give this movie a chance no matter what. Now, during the recording of this podcast, Marvel actually released a special look at Black Widow. They're calling it Trailer 1.5. Now, this new trailer had a ton of new footage and actually put a lot of spotlight on the villain, Taskmaster. We got a better look at Taskmaster, we got to see him in action, and we got to see his telltale shield, which is critical to the character working. As I mentioned before, I wasn't feeling a lot of hype around this movie, and this trailer did help me a little bit. I'm a huge Taskmaster fan, and I wasn't too happy with that first appearance of the mask. What we saw yesterday did make me a bit happier though. Not only did we get a lot of extra footage of the Taskmaster, we also got some more Black Widow, Elena Belova, and the Red Guardian all included in that trailer. It's sort of unclear where they're headed with this movie, but I highly suspect whatever future storylines in the MCU are being set up, we're going to see the first steps of that happening here. Marvel is obviously counting on Scarlett Johansson's Black Widow to be a really big film and to kick off the new MCU Phase 4 with a bang. The new trailer seemed to align it better with fans, and the general reaction that I'm seeing is much more positive than the first. Hopefully, the hype train is back on the tracks. Well, if you're a Marvel video game fan, you got some bad news this week. And in the train of bad news, let's get to video games. Apparently, Marvel's Avengers by Crystal Dynamics has been delayed for nearly four months. Now, this news pretty much came out of left field, but it was revealed that Marvel's Avengers will no longer meet that May 15th release date that we were all counting on. Instead, fans will have to wait nearly four months until September the 4th to get their hands on the game. At least that's the official statement now. The guys over at Crystal Dynamics did do a press release and they said, At Crystal Dynamics, our ambition has always been to deliver the ultimate Avengers gaming experience. In order to achieve that goal, we have made a difficult decision to move the release date of Marvel's Avengers to September 4th, 2020. Now, this might not be such a bad thing. If you didn't hear, last year's WWE... 2K20 video game was released and had mega bugs in it, which really made a lot of fans more than a little bit angry. This, plus some of the footage released to it coming under some serious fire, is looking a little, we'll call it rough to be nice, probably encouraged the company to step back, take a look at what they were doing, and maybe update the game. It was also recently confirmed that they'll be adding Ms. Marvel in a playable role in the game, so you very well may see them adding a couple other characters that we know are coming to the big or little screen, and that ultimately is the reason for the delay. They're not going to share this with us, but I am really curious on what you guys think, and if you were counting on this game in just a couple of weeks. I know I was. Well, I think that's all we're going to do for this week. We're kind of running short on time. I wanted to thank everybody for tuning in, and remind everybody to subscribe to us on Libsyn, on Spotify, and on YouTube, to make sure you get every single episode to get your Marvel updates in a more concise format without any clickbait. I also wanted to remind everybody that you're more than welcome to join us as a guest on this podcast. 
If you think you'd make a great guest, reach out to me on Twitter or on YouTube, and we'll see if we can make that happen. And once again, if you're watching us on YouTube, make sure you like, comment, and subscribe below. Oh, and ring that silly bell. You have no idea how much this helps the channel, the podcast, and the organization grow, and it is so appreciated. So hit that button. Thank you. I think that's it for this week. If you like this video or this podcast, make sure you hit like below, click subscribe, and if you don't ring that bell, you won't get any updates. Peace.